Hi, everybody. Hello there. Jerry. And Linda. We're the Village's newcomers with a special show for you today. We have in our home, Sheriff Bill Farmer. Welcome, Sheriff. Thank you, Jerry. It's, it's been a pleasure to be invited here today to, to do this for, for you and to join in with you and Linda. I want to say something. I'm going to, I'm going to tell our viewers. We put in requests from time to time to talk to people, and most times we don't even get a call back. Mm -hmm. But I, I went to the website for the sheriff. I'm going to, I'm going to probably embarrass you here just a little bit. His website says Sheriff Farmer is committed to maintaining an open line of communication with the citizens of Sumter County. And it goes on, but at the end it says we're continuously seeking out opportunities to partner with the public to maintain an open dialogue with those we serve. We ask, and you came. Thank you That's very right. much. It's an honor to be here. Well, we're, we're so <laughs> glad and, you and are. thanks for the invitation. You are so welcome. Sheriff Farmer has been sheriff since 1996. That's a long time. I'm on my seventh term now. Seventh four-year term. It'll be 28 years at the end of this term. That's amazing. Wow. And Wonderful. before that, many years in law enforcement, I started in law enforcement in 1966. And I started here for the sheriff's office in 71. Wow. And uh, been here many, many years. Yes, sir. I couldn't help but see when I looked at uh, the website that four times when you run for sheriff, you weren't even opposed. Right. Only the first two times in this past time for the seventh one I was opposed. But the, all the other times was unopposed. And they... The election supervisor told me that I was the only sheriff to ever run in Sumter County on a post. All the records up to then, it was always opposition. That is amazing. I noticed on the last election, if I'm correct, and please correct me if I'm wrong, you got 72% of the vote. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is a lot of the vote. They trust yeah. <laughs> So you've served, and in fact, in the state of Florida, you're one of the guys, aren't you? Right. Uh, the dean of sheriffs is Harold Reed. He's in Hamilton County at Jasper, Florida. He's got a term over me. Uh, but I'm the next in line. Uh, we're the two longest serving sheriffs in the state of Florida. Now, your sheriff, I couldn't help but notice, Sheriff Bill Farmer. Your mm -hmm. middle name is Okla. Yes, and it's an old family name. Uh, my granddaddy's uh, way back has, has kept that name constantly. Mm -hmm. And I got a son, William Moore Farmer III, and I'm a junior. But he says he's dropping it. Oh. It'll end with him. <laughs> and I said, that's okay. Because in his kids, he wanted to name some after his wife's uh, grandfather's too. So He might drop it, but then somebody will pick it up in the future. When I took a naval exam, out of high school, they sent us an exam to take. When that um, a name came back on the results, it said William Oklahoma Farmer Jr. <laughs> uh, they thought it was for Oklahoma, and I'd abbreviated it, but it's actually Okla. One of the main reasons we asked you here today was people in the villages and people that are interested in the villages and senior citizens that want to move down here are concerned about crime. So they ask us, do you have police protection? Now, honestly, when I look outside my window a couple times a day, I'll see the neighborhood watch go by. And once in a while, I'll see one of your cars up and down Hillsboro Trail or Pinellas mm -hmm. or somewhere. Or, and once in a while, you park a car out there with that uh, speed meter. Yeah, yeah. speed sign on it. Yeah, yeah, to kind of warn people to slow mm -hmm. down. Do you patrol the villages? Yes, we've broken the villages down right now into five zones. And each zone has a patrolman. 24-7 in that zone that takes calls there. And the other uh, patrolmen in the other zones will back them up whenever they need to leave their zone and, and back up uh, a unit within a, another zone. There's always people that'll uh, be ready to back up that, that deputy That's in that particular know. zone. Mm -hmm. But we, we keep it covered. And I've got uh, five deputies that works five zones 24-7, but I also have two detectives and one lieutenant that work here in the villages, in the village annex, and this is what they do. But you'd be surprised, Jerry, here in the villages, we really have no large amount of crime. Our biggest crime that we are facing here is, is identity theft. We as seniors, and I count myself as one, 
We're constantly getting calls each and every day on our cell phones and our home phones. People trying to find out our social security numbers, our date of birth, and, uh, and they're trying to get those ID numbers from us where they can use them to gain your identity and, and steal from you. And I try to tell everybody that I go to uh, and, and have uh, meetings with, your telephones, they're yours. When you get these calls, hang up on these people. Do not let them keep you on the line very long because the longer they keep you on the line, they know that they have a great possibility of getting the numbers they want. Mm -hmm. And so I would say, you have a nice day, but uh, Jerry, goodbye. Jerry used to uh, tell them your routine. <laughs> used I, to be real ugly with them, but now uh, what do you say to them? I don't be real ugly with them. Mm -hmm. If I see it's a, a call coming in and it's unavailable, there's no ID, that is a, a possible identity theft there that's coming in. So you have to be very careful because they will hide. Or I've had a call thinking it's from my wife from my home phone number to my cell number, and it will be one of these calls. They're using your own home phone number thinking they're going to get you to answer it because you'll think one of your family members, one of your loved ones and children at home, they are calling you, and, but it won't be. It won't be. They are tricky. They are tricky, and uh, that's the major thing, having such a large senior population here in the villages is identity theft. You really have to be careful and guard your bank accounts. Mm -hmm. We know about a month ago, yeah. for the second time, somebody charged about $1,000 worth of groceries mm -hmm. to our credit card, and we had to cancel it again. Twice in the last three months, we've had to cancel our credit cards and get new ones, and that is such a hassle. Yeah, my wife and I started on vacation one year, and uh, we used uh, my gasoline card down here at a shell station in South Sumter to fill up before we left. It was a driving vacation. It was going up to West Virginia, that area. And before I got out of state, that card was no good. Mm. The bank had tried to call us, and we wasn't at home, but so they put a hold on it. And every place I tried to use that card that I used for gasoline, oh. it denied it. And when I called the bank, uh, they said, that's the reason. Uh, someone has, had skimmed your card and asked uh, to use it in Michigan. As soon as you bought gas, the next thing was a small purchase in Michigan. And that alerted the bank when that occurs that your card has been skimmed. These folks at home will love to, to learn more about this, but is, we've heard, is it that they put some sort of device inside the uh, gas, gas pump. station pump, and when yes. you slide your card, it reads your number? It reads your number, and it gives them all the information off of your card that you need, even your PIN number when you punch it in to get your gasoline. Is there any way to recognize that by looking at the gas pump and say, hey, that's been tampered with? The gas pumps uh, now, usually the station attendants will, when they go into the pump, they will put a piece of tape across it. And if that tape is broken, I would not use that pump. Okay. It's like we use a, a piece of evidence tape that you can't tamper with it. If you do, you break it. It comes apart. It's real thin red tape. If you see that on a pump, chances are that pump has been tampered with because the attendant, when they go into a pump to change the t uh, tape for your bill that comes out of the, there, they will always put that piece of tape back on. We just found out that you have cars patrolling the villages. What, come on now, really. Now, what, what are the chances you're going to give a, a golf cart a speeding ticket? Uh, not much, but we do give DUI golf carts. Ooh, yeah. A lot of people have too much to drink, and they get on that golf cart. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of bad accidents involving mm -hmm. golf carts. And when you get a, a two or four thousand pound vehicle hit a golf cart, you got a problem. We we have people have to be airlifted to a trauma center. Mm -hmm.
Wow. And, and what about response times? Have you made any uh, notes about that? The, the response times are usually less than five minutes here in the village. It may seem longer because you got a problem, but right. yes. we, we're constantly staying on top of that and, and looking at it and making sure that we, we are responding real quickly because we know when, when you call, that's what you expect. People expect that response time to be five minutes or less. I don't know how many of our shows you've watched, but I just want to tell you that if you watch, you know, sometimes the camera makes it look like I'm rolling through those stop signs. I'm really stopping. It's more of an optical illusion. They call it a California stop. A, yeah, that's it. When you roll through. Yeah. That's what they do out there. My daughter lived in California for a while, and I visited her. I saw a lot of that in California. We, we get letters uh, worried about crime in the villages. How much crime do you see in the villages? A very minimum amount compared to the population of 130, 140,000 people in one location. Uh, we're bigger than the city of Ocala right now. We didn't surpass that a long time ago. And for the amount of people that we have in this area, the crime rate is really good. Uh, it's uh, this year, we've come down on a crime rate. Crime, crime rate in Florida, the average is around 15% uh, overall in Florida. But right now in Sumter County, we're right there in that 18 percentile range for the, all of all the county, not just the villages. So it's uh, right there comparable with the rest of the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. And so we like that figure. Yeah. Right. Sometimes we see from the newspaper, we talked about it, there's one newspaper in particular that loves to print negative news mm -hmm. because good news doesn't isn't newsworthy, is it? No, People, it doesn't sell papers. It doesn't sell papers. Yeah. So these folks that are far away that are Googling and, and studying the villages, they're seeing these negative things mm -hmm. when they're really, I mean, no. the people come here to have a good time. We don't, they don't come down here to. Far more positive things in the villages. Yes. Negative is very minute. Yeah. Uh, you but, don't live in the villages, do you? No, I, I live in South Sumter County on a ranch down there, family, family land. Nice. Yeah. I know the first month I was here, I left my purse, a small purse, in between the seats of my golf cart and went into some place. And I went, I don't know why I left it. But anyway, I came back and went, oh, my gosh, I cannot believe I left that. Oh, I was at a rec center. Cannot believe it was still there. But, man, I was, was so there. lucky and felt lucky. And I'm going, this is the best place to live. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's a 911 system, but today everybody has cell phones. Does the 911 system work with you guys? Yes, it does. When you, you make a 911 call, it'll come off the closest tower. Uh, it, it'll, it'll ping your cell phone to the closest tower. We've got towers here in the villages. And uh, it goes to our 911 center. It goes to the closest one, and we're the closest nine. Right. 911 center. And you said an right average of five villages. minutes, probably. Yes. Okay. Um, can't help notice right down there by Monarch Grove, which is one of our villages, there's a prison. Is that in Sumter County? That is the federal prison. Right. That's, that's called FCC Coleman. That's okay. a, a federal Correctional Center, Coleman. Uh, it's the largest federal prison in the nation. We have never had an escape from inside that prison. Uh, their security and their uh, equipment they have uh, on their fence lines and their tower guards, uh, it's just imprintable. Uh, nobody can make it through there. Nobody has ever uh, escaped from inside. We've got two U.S. penitentiaries there. We've got a minimum custody and a medium custody, and they've got a female work camp there, but I understand the, the females are fixing to be transferred to the prison in Mariana. And... Uh, but they were doing all the outside maintenance work and lawn care at the federal prison, all the females were. But uh, they're going to adopt a program with trustees to do that, male trustees to do all the mowing and, and uh, bush hogging outside the prison. But they've been a good partnership here. They have caused us no problems whatsoever. Um, and uh, it has a lot of, a lot of people. Uh, there compared to the other prisons. 
Well, as I say, it's, it's got three prisons within that territory, all on the same compound. <clears throat> That's going to alleviate the fear of a lot of people that worry about things like that. Right. Because, like I said earlier, you hear about some of the negatives. The prison sounds like one, but from what you're saying, it really has not been a problem. In fact, they've been good neighbors. And it, it, they maintain state-of-the-art security equipment and virtually impossible to get away from inside now. And uh, they, they're, they're a good partnership with the community. And they try to hide it behind the tree lines where people just can't relatively uh, see it unless you drive on the compound. Mm -hmm. Where is your office? My office here is on Powell Road behind the uh, government center here in Wildwood. Uh, that's our main office now. We still maintain office at the county seat in Bushnell. The county jail is located in Bushnell. And we have just uh, done some work on our county jail and added a new uh, two-story wing. And we're up to uh, our population right now, jail capacity is 780. Uh, today we have uh, 419 inmates in our jail. Wow. And through COVID, we were COVID free in our jail because we isolated people when they came to jail. And our judges here allowed us to write citations for notices to appear on misdemeanor crimes. And if we got felonies, they were isolated for the 10 to 14 days. We only ended up with one case of COVID and that case was isolated and kept out of the general population. And so in my county detention center, we had only that one case and didn't have any other cases in the detention center because of how we did it and how we handled the inmates that came into our, our custody. Wow, that, uh, that's impressive. Mm -hmm. You and your website says you have over 300 employees how many of them are active uh, on the streets uh, patrolling? 160 sworn deputy sheriffs working the street. And uh, I've got eight, uh, 80 sworn correctional officers, uh, non-sworn officers in the jail. I've got 82 sworn correctional officers in the jail. So it's about half and half. And uh, the uh, detectives we have uh, is sworn also, but they work cases, and uh, we have roughly about 20 detectives and our school resource officers. Do you have very many women on the, on the force? Oh, yes. Good. We have very diverse employees. Uh, we have uh, a good field of, of diversity within our agency. I have a total of, of 364 employees right now. and. Uh, they're very diverse, and uh, they do an excellent job, every one of them, for the people of Sumter County. Very good. Now, you've been sheriff for 25 years? <sighs> yes, right now, 25. Fixing to be 28 at the end of this term. And then what? How many more? <laughs> they want me to go many, many more. But it comes a time you'd like to travel with your family a little bit. We want to thank the sheriff for coming here today. You know... He's everything you want in a sheriff. I mean, he's friendly. Mm -hmm. He's accessible. Uh, what I had in my notes here was this guy walks the walk. You know, he didn't just talk the talk. He said he'd be accessible. Here he is. We love that. We want to thank you so much for being here, Sheriff Farmer. Jerry, I just want to thank you. And it was a pleasure being here with you and Linda today. And just anytime you want me to, we can certainly do this again. Thank you so much. That's going to do it for this edition. I hope you liked it. We sure did. Uh, remember, hit that like and subscribe. Until next time. See you when you get here.